What's up guys and dolls, welcome to the good, the bad and the stupid, it's Friday the 2nd of October. Hope you're well, another instalment from me, last one of the week, Friday feeling, everybody get about your day, forget about me for the weekend and also when you, well, if, if you're in the mornings, uh, wherever you are, if this is coming to you in the morning time, don't forget, it's Friday, drink at work, if the pubs are closing at 10 o'clock, drink at work and then you, you're suitably drunk by the time 10 o'clock comes around. They're trying to close people, the off licenses now, and try to stop them from serving alcohol from nine o'clock to stop people going out of the pubs and partying and go straight to the off licenses and buying alcohol. That's a pisser because the alcohol, the off licenses, I bet they've loaded up. I bet they got bought shit loads in because they knew that that was what was going to happen. So uh, you just got to try and get around it, haven't you? Try and enjoy yourself around the crazy rules. I mean, obviously, with your social distancing, with common sense, we've all a lot of people have common sense. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't. But <laughs> you know, some, as I say, some ruin it for everybody. But I'll, I'll happily be. Uh, I'll get pissed anyway. I don't mind. I don't need a crowd of people around me to get pissed. Don't need it. I could get pissed with you on this podcast. You know, I could just crack open a bottle of whiskey now, neck it all in one, one go, like that guy off uh, Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> What's his name? Oh, Lay Leahy, Mister Leahy. If you if you've never watched Trailer Park Boys, catch it. It's fucking hilarious. It's got <clears throat> the the one old drunk in it who uh, drink, necks a bottle of whiskey in one go very often, and uh, is the most fun. Is one of the most the best drunks, like somebody who's acting to act drunk that I've, I've, I've ever seen. He's up there with uh, the guy from Shameless. The two of them are the two top, the two uh, the, the two top pretend pissheads. Although they probably maybe they do get pissed. Just to, but there's nobody. I've I've seen people who are pissed who don't look as pissed as them, who don't who act less pissed than them. Should I say who, who come across like they're acting? Should I say? Whereas these like fucking are acting and they come across like they're extremely pissed. That's what I meant to say. Come on, Wayne. It sounds like I've already had a drink already, doesn't it? I'm not. I think I'm coming down with something. I've been out in the rain all day today. It's fucking soaking wet, head to toe, three times. Because people keep calling me out. I didn't want to go out. People says I've got to come and collect something, but I need to do it today because I've got to get to London. But <laughs> you didn't say nothing about that. It's Friday night. Yeah, but I need it tonight. I need it today because I've got to get to London. Otherwise, you'll have to give me my money back. So I've had to do what I've got to do. Anyway, what we're doing is about the news. Let's move on to the hoax caller that's been plaguing uh, the 999 services, calling himself Clint Eastwood. <laughs> his, uh, his real name's Thomas Thompson. Not quite as exciting as Clint Eastwood. He phoned for an ambulance on two separate days. Is that it? He's not really... Well, he's been doing it all day on the two separate days. But he got caught. Clint Eastwood. He obviously left his phone on too long. And they can check you now, and they? Because you ever rang anybody these days. They say, uh, you, you call them and go, um, they say, we'll give you a call back. All right, have you got my... You ain't got my number? Yeah, we have. Is it 07? And they tell you. And you go, yes, yeah, so the number comes up on their phone. So unless you're doing it from a phone box, he's probably sitting there bored doing it from his own phone. In the house, pissed again. Somebody else who's not very good at being pissed. And he's going, uh, he's what, just watch Good, the Bad and the Stupid or something. Good, not the Good, the Bad and the Stupid, that's me. He's just watched The Good, the Bad and the Ugly on the TV. Thinks he's Clint Eastwood. And starts ringing up. What's he doing? Go on, uh, how's he ringing up saying I broke my leg? I'm Clint Eastwood, I broke my leg. Was he doing it with the accent? Who knows? Anyway, he's an idiot and he's got a fine for it. Uh, what was it? Donald Trump's got uh, coronavirus and so is his wife. So they're self-isolating. Is he getting out of, uh, is it true? Or is he getting out of uh, doing his presidential debates? Or is it just come around so it doesn't have to affect the presidential uh, debate? But anyway, he's got ill, so uh, I mean, he's in his seventies, isn't he? So he's in the he's in the obese group and he's in the age group that could be risky. So uh, he's having to self isolate. So the news is going to be all over that. We're going to be hearing about that. Everybody wants to know through the keyhole. Any butlers? Any who's at the White House? Who's outside the room? Who's going to give the uh, give the lowdown? There's people are people are going to be telling some. Some stories, spinning some yarns, the newspapers are going to be telling some bullshit over the next couple of weeks. Anyway, he said uh, um, 
before all that happened, he said that his 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 uh, what's it called? The reason he's got loads of hair. The reason he's got lo he's got loads of hair is because of McDonald's French fries. So if anybody's going bald, always worried about their hair. He says that his secret to his lung um, longevity in his hair, although most people think he's wearing a wig, uh, is uh, McDonald's French fries. So he eats that much French fries. Probably why he's got an orange face. He definitely wears fake tan. And I saw a picture earlier today. You could just see there was like a fucking circle around his face. You can see where the white was because his hair had blown back. But anyway, there you go. If you uh, if you if you're going bald and you want to save yourself on a uh, hair transplant, get yourself a big bag of McDonald's French fries and see how that goes. I don't think it will do anything. It'll probably make your toenails fall off because you'll have eaten too much. What's it called? Too much uh, shit food, whatever. I don't know what's in it. Preservatives or E numbers and whatnot. What's this woman? A woman who uh, who, who uh, sleepwalks. She sleepwalks and then goes shopping. <laughs> she, so don't let her near your fucking credit card if you if you. Uh, she married or what? Is she um, if she's with a fella. I bet it's, uh, the best the best part of that situation if she does it on his card. And every time she wakes up, she orders herself a nice pair of shoes or a nice bit of bottle of perfume, and he'll go, "Don't worry, love, that's fine, keep it, or whatever." <laughs> but she's spending three thousand pounds, including a full-size plastic basketball court. So no, that's not. Uh, she's pulling shit out the fucking bag there, or, 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 off the top of her head, isn't she? She's dreaming about stuff and going, "Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe watch something on the TV." Next thing you know, she's dreaming about basketball. Orders it, and then she's ordering Harry Bow sweets, cookies, girls' clothes. What else? Is that it? Be very if she was ordering sex toys and fucking, you know, I don't know. What else could you be ordering? <laughs> some re weird shit. Some really odd bullshit. I mean, obviously, you don't want a basketball court, but it ain't the fucking funniest thing to come out with. I haven't read these. I'm in a rush. That's why. But anyway, she spends... So that's got to be a fucking... A pain in the ass because you you wouldn't keep it all, would you? Just to keep sending it back. Can I give me money back? Can I give me money back? It cost you in the end. Because the end. Because the end. They charge you to send it back, don't they? Anyway, so uh, good job it's not takeaways because they're going to take that back. You'll be a big fatty fatty bum bum because you'd have to keep it all, um, and you'd have to eat it then because if you got it, you just got to eat it, especially if it's like fast food because that's the most. Um, addictive of it all, isn't it? You got to you see it. How can you not eat a pizza when it's there in front of you? You can't. You have got to eat it. Uh, inmates, at a, inmates at a top security prison complained after their weekly fry up English breakfast replaced by a hot dog. You can't do shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. The place up. They ain't gonna have that. <laughs> and a hot dog doesn't equate a, a hot dog. We all want a hot dog, but you know that's a snack. That's not a fucking replace a full English breakfast or like a big fry up, and that's like every man's every man's uh, right. They would say you know the breakfast. I mean, I don't need the meat and everything, but even still, I'd still want the vegetarian version or whatever. But fucking, you ain't gonna have that. That'll be that's it. Some prison guard's gonna be taken hostage. He's gonna fucking be paraded around. They're gonna keep him there until the, the English breakfast back on the menu. It was only a little while ago. I told you that. Uh, They'd made all the prisoners happy and stopped them from rioting when they gave them little treats like biscuits and fuck knows what I don't know what it was now. Loads of like street treats and everything. They was all happy as Larry. Porridge, more porridge. So yeah, that is not going to go down well. I'm I'm afraid that governor's trying to be the hard knock, but he's just going to fuck up his his prison guards. He's trying to be the hard knock of the uh, you know no one messes around in my in my prison. Next thing you know, in the seventies. That place, the roof would be off and everything, but uh, maybe it depends on what prison it is. They might still be able. To, they know all the rules. All the prisoners know how to fucking. They know how to fucking um, get shit into prison. They know how to fucking make beer while they're in prison. They're, not, they're running enterprise in there. So you tell me they're not going to be able to work out how to get their English breakfast back? Come on. Uh, where are we going? Big bombs. You got to have a big bomb if you. Uh... Well, that's. I know loads of people with big bombs who can't run for shit. Trust me. Uh, uh, but I think that you need to develop your backside apparently so that you can bolt off the fucking off the start line. But then you know, that's, is this new? Because there's loads of athletes. Is this new? And then this is a new thing that the athletes are going to start blowing up their asses. 
Us athletes are already doing it, have already winning things left, right, and centre, and a lot of them haven't got big asses. Some have, but you know they're losers. A lot of them. They all look fucking on the fin on the start line. They all look the bollocks. They all look like fucking head to toe, Mister Muscle. They all look like fit as fit as fit as anything. You know, bulging biceps, bulging ass, arseps, whatever you call them, uh, glutes, bulging all over. But a lot of them lose. Well, they're faster than fucking anybody else you put in front. I mean, they're up against Usain Bolt and stuff, but still got someone who's got to come last. But he's still last of the best ten in the in the in the world or whatever. But they're not all got big asses, is what I'm saying. So now they're all going to try and pump their asses up to try and get that extra. Maybe get that extra. It's all milliseconds, isn't it? They have to train and train and train and train hours and hours and hours just to try and get increments increments that make a difference on that start line. Well, on the hundred meters anyway. Tell you what, you want to just get fucking grow up on the council estate and get chased by the police your whole uh, childhood, and then you'll, uh, you know, or 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 do all the things that you used to do to get chases off people, or fucking throwing stones at people's windows and stuff like that. You'll soon build up your uh, your ass muscles, jumping over the fucking gut back gardens, people's back gardens. Make perfect, that's what all you scouts out there, scouting for athletes, get yourself around the council estates like before they fucking turn to drugs and drink. And no hope, which is is uh, unfortunately much the case in many ta in many situations. A man who grabbed an, a male passenger's genitals in the toilets on a train said he tripped. It's, <laughs> he's got to be, is he drunk? Barry Smith must sign the sex offenders register. And pay the victim six hundred and fifty quid. He grabbed them with the force of a strong. <laughs> so uh, come on, he could, come on, he could, come on. He... I mean, he could have fell over, but it's a funny thing to try and grab. But I tell you what, when you're on these packed trains, you ain't got fuck it. You can't get some of them. You can't get near the handrails. You're having to just get fucking bounced left, right, and forward, and backwards by other people's bodies because you can't get no no one sitting down. You can't get to the handrail, so maybe he fucking went back on one, grabbed the geyser by his bollocks, and squeezed hard because he was going to fall over. That's, tell you what, I'd, I'd appeal that. <laughs> He's got to go on the sex offenders register for that. Come on, I mean, he probably was looking in his eyes, licking his lips and doing it. They've got it on CCTV. Who knows? They've got to have that on CCTV because that's his word against this, isn't it? You could easily say he wasn't. <laughs> you haven't, didn't do it. Unless there's witnesses, I don't know. Right, uh, it's going to be an early finish, I'm afraid. Uh, what's this guy? Uh, this guy's uh, got a new takeaway. He's combined two these telephone boxes because nobody uses telephone boxes now, have they? So people are thinking of new ways of using them. And this guy, he's turned one of them into an Indian takeaway. <laughs> he's got like a fucking special biryani. He's got a special specials menu and everything going on in there. Oven. Well, it's, it's like a fucking microwave to me. I don't know about that. He's obviously cooking them somewhere else because. He's got chicken biryanis, lamb ticket, lamb samosas, lamb biryani. He's got that's about it. He's got a small menu. He's only got he got much of space to sell it. I think he's got them cooked. He's eating them up in the microwave. But wait, but wait, roaring trade because London, where it's packed, it's all about the footfall. If you're packed and people are walking past, you're gonna sell some, and that's that. Especially because it's a novelty, people wanna go, oh, people wanna have a photo with it. I bet people are having the photo, buying the curry, going, oh, look, but foreign, what's it called, uh, tourists, having a photo with the Indian guy, with the telephone box. Um, you know, you go, look, this is what this business, this is my business. Oh, this is like a business in England, so I say, a quirky novelty business. I hope he makes a fortune. It's a great idea. Anything different is a good idea. It stops people pissing in it anyway. Although that was a place where fucking homeless people would go in and they'd still use the phone boxes to ring their drug dealers because they can't afford the fucking mobile. But some of them, I'm about the real homeless, not the ones who are begging who've got a fucking iPhone in the pocket. I'm talking about the proper homeless. and They need those phone boxes to ring, ring the crack dealers because... If you're on the street, you might as well smoke crack because it's fucking shit on the street and smoking crack. So, unfortunately, I say if you're on the street, take drugs. Fuck it. If no one's getting you off the street, you might as well, at the very least, enjoy yourself. Right, last one. Ed Sheeran's spit, Ed Sheeran's spitting, spitting image puppet has been remodelled 
um, because it's to stop it from offending redheads. Fuck redheads, offend them. It doesn't matter. They don't give a shit. They've got to take the piss out of everybody. You can't just start fucking being oh, touchy, touchy about who you can offend and who you can't. But you're going to offend everybody. Spitting image offends everybody. And it also offends redheads. So what? It's a big deal. It's it's meant to be offending Ed Sheeran. So what? He's a multi 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 millionaire. He's a fucking easy target. And it looks like fucking Mick Hucknell anyway. <laughs> Mick Hucknell off simply red. That's the most offensive thing about it. That fucking the Ed Sheeran would be pissed off that it actually looks like a spitting image of uh, Mick Hucknell. So he's basically saying, do I really look like him? Because it does caricaturise your face. Anyway, it looks good to me. I don't know what he's got on his head. It looks like he's got a cabbage sticking out of his head. I'll have to find out when I watch it. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll do another one next week. Have a great weekend. See you later. Bye.